Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 32. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our open loop style boost control. Open loop control is going to be allowing us to have a very simplistic way to operate and control a three port boost solenoid. So if we're turbocharged and we want to increase our boost pressure past our wastegate spring actuator or wastegate spring level on an external wastegate, we have to learn how to integrate a boost solenoid to achieve the results that we're after. We have a tremendous amount of programming flexibility as far as our boost control strategies go. I'm gonna go through a couple different common examples in here and show you how to integrate and set them up. We're gonna have a lot to learn, so let's jump into this video so we can get started. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our open loop style boost control within our PC Link software. Our open loop boost control is gonna be the most simplistic way we have to control our boost. It's gonna allow us to just run a particular amount of duty cycle command to our boost control solenoid and achieve a certain level of boost. Very simplistic, there's gonna be no feedback or control directly from the link system. It's going to do whatever we program it to do. Um, we're gonna find that we have a couple different control strategies we can implement with our boost control. There's gonna be a bunch of compensation and modifier tables from the base table that we program. It's actually very simple in order to work with the boost control. We're gonna be breaking everything down here in this video. The next video, we're gonna be taking a look at our closed loop style boost control. In the closed loop boost control, we're gonna have a PID style adjustment. So we're gonna have feedback directly from our virtual programming here. The link can make adjustments to the base duty cycle that we're populating, and it can try to increase or decrease that duty cycle to achieve a target boost that we're gonna program. So the closed loop control gives us advantages, uh, but it will be more complicated to set up and get right. The open loop is simplistic. It works on most every single setup. You're gonna find that the open loop is probably what you wanna start off with, regardless if you wanna tune in closed loop, because it's gonna allow you to get your base table populated, and then you can turn on your closed loop control from your open loop. So you can go from open loop into closed loop, and you'll find that most of the programming and functionality is gonna be the exact same. That's the same kind of idea when we were talking about our idle control, working with either our open or closed loop style format. We know we needed to start off in our open loop in order to populate our base position table. Then we could turn on the closed loop and the closed loop would work much better and track much better because we would have figured out what that base percentage in our, our control is for the idle control and then we're gonna allow the link to adjust from that point. Exact same idea here with the boost control. So open loop is what we're gonna start off with here. We're gonna be taking a look at the next video in that closed loop control and then digging into that because it is more complicated. What I'm gonna do here is jump from my basics page and we're gonna go use our green arrow here and toggle across the screen into our page labeled OLBST. This is for open loop boost. We can find we also have one here for CL for B CLBST. That's gonna be for our closed loop boost. We're gonna be just focusing on this page right here in our tutorial. So up on screen right now, you're gonna find we have some of our programming details for the boost setup. We're gonna find our tables here for the open loop style boost. Very basic, very simplistic here. Down um, on the left-hand corner, this is gonna be our live data that we might wanna take a look at for programming our boost control. Then we have our time plot here and our parameters list that's gonna tie in. We can take a look at data logs in reviewing what is going on with our open loop control. So everything has been set up here, very simplistic, and it's direct to the point. You'll find everything you need to edit and start to work with this. So before we jump into any of the programming here, I wanna talk about um, how boost control works understanding the relationship between our turbine wheel and our wastegates and our exhaust manifolds, just so you understand the basic mechanical concepts going on here, and then understanding and moving into understanding how the boost control is gonna be fitting into this to be able to turn up the boost pressure from the wastegate spring or wastegate actu actuator level that we're gonna be working with and it's gonna be at on the engine and the turbo configuration that we have. So let's talk about the basics here with our boost control. What we're gonna find in any turbocharged engine, we're gonna have our exhaust manifold. The exhaust manifold is then gonna have a turbocharger bolted onto it. Now, as our exhaust pressure comes out of the exhaust manifold, it's gonna go into the turbine housing. That's the housing that bolts on to the actual uh, turbo manifold itself. The turbine housing is gonna direct the exhaust gas into the turbine wheel. The turbine wheel is gonna spin within the housing. Now the turbine wheel is connected on a common shaft to our compressor. So the compressor is gonna be what generates the flow and the boost pressure in our turbocharger. So the faster we spin our turbine wheel, the faster the compressor can spin because they're linked on a common shaft. So if we're trying to generate more boost pressure, we need to generate more shaft speed on our turbocharger. Now, when we're talking about our boost control and our wastegate, we're going to find we wanna regulate 
what that shaft speed is going to be, what that turbine speed is going to be, and ultimately what the compressor speed is going to be so that we don't build too much pressure um, and damage the engine or have un undesired results. If we build too much pressure, we might go into wheel spin. That's not what we want to do. We want to control the boost and be precise. So what we're going to find is that we have a wastegate assembly that's going to be found either on the... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.